OK, let's take a look at the vocabulary. For those of you at home, uh, the microphone was broken for the last part of the reading. OK, the first word, anxiety. Um, so you're nervous about something. This is the feeling of nervousness. But the adjective, anxious. The word anxious sometimes can be good. If you're anxious to do something, that means that you cannot wait to do something. Uh, but you're, if you're anxious about something, that again means that you're nervous about something. So only anxious to is a good thing. Uh, OK, and moving on, we have depression. Depression is when you have a mental condition where you feel sad or empty all the time. Originally, uh, originally this word meant a low part. For example, a low part of the land. Um, but it then came to refer to like a low energy part of your life, a deep sadness. And only in the past few decades has it really had a medical definition, a specific kind of mental condition. So the adjective to be depressed today could mean you have depression, it could also mean you're very sad. Without having a medical condition. Meditation, jing zuo da zuo. The verb to meditate. Uh, if you say to meditate on something, that means you're thinking about something over a long time. Minimum, the smallest, the lowest, the least. The adjective is minimal. The opposite, the antonym, is maximum and maximal. OK, second row, pessimism. This is when you think that everything is going to hell. No, everything is going to turn out wrong. Everything is going poorly. All the results will be bad. Pessimism. Uh, big one. Someone who has who has uh, pessimism is a pessimist. The opposite is optimism. When you believe that everything will turn out perfectly fine, no problem. And uh, that kind of person is an optimist. In between the two, right? Optimism is good, pessimism is bad. In the middle, you have realism. Someone who is a realist tries to be clear about what will happen, tries not to be too biased. Um, and then you have another kind of person called a cynic. And their thinking is called cynicism. In Chinese, I think we call this Chen Ru Zhu Yi. Fen Si Ji Su. A cynic is someone who believes that um, everybody is selfish, pe the results will be determined based on. Uh, pure power struggle. Nobody is trying to do the right thing. They're only trying to do what's good for themselves. OK, next response and respond simply means to react to something. Huiying. This word is also related to responsibility. So when in English we say you have a responsibility, 
in part that means when something happens, you have to respond. Next we have restlessness. To be restless means you find it hard to rest, find it hard to stop and chill. You're always uh, nervous about something. You always want to try to do something. You, you need to be doing something. You cannot sit still. Restless. Next, survival. To survive means to live through a difficult experience. Survival, even though it ends in AL, is a noun. Someone who survives is a survivor, OR. Um, so often we will hear a phrase called Survival of the fittest. In Chinese, this is 适者生存. Third row, symptom, 病症. This is uh, how an illness presents in the body or in the mind. So a symptom is what a doctor looks for to diagnose you to determine if you have an illness and what kind of illness it is. So diagnose, duan. The adjective of symptom is symptomatic. Next, tension. Tension comes from the adjective tense. Tense comes from physics, and it means that there is energy in a system that is imbalanced. Uh, so in everyday life, the word tense means that you, the opposite of relaxed. Like you're holding energy in your body, like maybe in your shoulders, maybe in your your jaw. Uh, so tension is that energy that you are holding, maybe because you are nervous. It could also refer to a kind of weird energy between two people or two or more people. When like there's something in the in the air, when there's an elephant in the room, then it can feel like there's tension in the room. Next, you have a threat. A threat is something that might be dangerous, that might cause harm. It could also be a, a, um, a kind of warning. It's a, a bad kind of warning, weishi. So the adjective is threatening. If something is threatening, that means it's dangerous. The word threat can be a noun or a verb. It, uh, both look the same. Next, we have an adjective, chronic. Uh, takes place over a long time. If you're talking about an illness, it means that it's not easily cured. We talked about some related words like uh, chronological. Next, we have anticipate. Anticipate means to expect and to prepare beforehand. In, in the mind. Next, we have engage in, which just means to do. 
if you say engage with, that means you consider and you think about and you interact with. It could be a person, it could be an idea. Engage with. Next, we have overwhelm, which means uh, to overpower. It's too much or too powerful to handle, then that thing overwhelms you. Below, we have some more advanced words. Adrenaline, sen sang shen su, comes from the adrenal glands. Back ache when your back hurts, like a stomach ache, right? Dozitong. Heart disease when something is wrong with your heart. Insomnia when you can't fall asleep. Someone who cannot fall asleep is an insomniac. Actually, speaking of stomachache, I actually do have a stomachache right now. Can we take an early break? Uh, it's 8.45. Let's take an early break and come back at not, uh, 8.55.
OK, let's continue. Uh, we talked about heart disease. Uh, in Chinese, I guess we call this xin zhang bing, but xin zhang bing fa in English is heart attack. Feels like your heart is attacking you. Bei xin zhang gong ji. Usually this is when, uh, for example, my heart finds it too weak and it's it's hard to move the blood throughout my body. And it's sort of try, it, the heart kind of loses control. That's a heart attack. Uh, okay, second row, massage. When somebody like presses on you as a kind of health measure, massage ma, ammo. Perspiration, sweat, liu han. The verb is to perspire. To perspire just means to sweat. Next, we have psychological. This comes from the noun psychology, xin li chue. So psychological has to do with the mind, xin li de. We have another related word called psyche. Psyche can refer to somebody's mind, somebody's mental health. Uh, it is closer to the original Greek word for mind. Next, we have the phrase something related. The X can be any noun. So health related means something related to health. Uh, stress related means something related to stress. The important point in this phrase is that hyphen, lian jie hao, do not forget this hyphen. It's a very important part of this word. Okay, third row, stroke. If I have a stroke, that means that there is, uh, that blood is not flowing through one part of my brain and it can lead to brain damage, zongfeng. But stroke has other meanings. The original meaning is uh, like to, to pet your dog or your cat, fu mo. Uh, and related to that is the, the way that you swim, yu yong de yang shi. So, um, Zi is free stroke. Wa si is breast stroke. Uh, it doesn't have to do with frogs in English um, because in English the idea is that your your chest is moving first. Uh, the one exception is go pa si, is dog paddle. Not a stroke, dog paddle. To paddle is uh, like to hit the water to move forward. So that's what you're doing when you're doing uh, swimming like a dog, right? You're paddling, you're hitting the water to move forward. And then one more meaning for the word stroke. If you have a stroke of insight, that means that you have a sudden thought. A stroke of insight. Next, we have substitute. This could be a noun or a verb. In, as a verb, to substitute A for B means to replace B using a so before you had b now you have a to re, uh, substitute a for b as a noun substitute is the b in substitute a for b it's the new thing sorry it's a a uh, to substitute a for b the substitute is a a is the new thing
Um, another common meaning for the word substitute is a person who takes the place of somebody else. For example, a substitute teacher, 代课老师. Often we would just call this person a substitute or even just a sub. Finally, we have yoga, yuja. Yoga is a very complicated thing. It's a kind of movement exercise. It's a kind of mental practice. Xingli shijian. Practice here is shijian. And it's it can also be a kind of religion or a kind of religious practice. But usually when Westerners talk about yoga, they're only talking about the exercise. Some people maybe are also talking about the mental practice, but very few Westerners talk about yoga as a religious practice. OK, do you have questions about these words? If not, let's go to page 48 and look at these questions. Um, so first part A is reading comprehension. Uh, let's look at the questions together and then I'll give you some time to answer these questions. One, what is stress? What does it do to us? Two, what kind of stress did our ancestors experience? What kind of stress do modern people experience? Three, what physical and emotional changes take place during stress? To take place just means to happen. Fasten. Is stress always harmful to our body? Explain your answer. Four, name two ways you can cope with stress. Uh, I'll give you five minutes to answer these questions.
OK, let's compare answers. What is stress? What does it do to us? From the first line of the uh, article, stress is the reaction of our bodies and minds to something disturbing or threatening that uh, upsets our physical and emotional balance. So what does it do to us? Our body, uh, from the second paragraph, our body experiences the fight or flight response. Uh, or you can say part of our nervous system becomes active and releases chemicals like adrenaline needed for fast action. Question two, what kind of stress did our ancestors experience? What kind of stress do modern people experience? From the first paragraph. Ancient times, OK, our early ancestors. Had to fight off wild animals and other threats, so that's the kind of express they experienced. Today we experience stress in any situation or event that overwhelms us, for instance, demanding responsibilities at work or at home, serious illness, death of a family member or close friend, loss of a job or a lover. Or when we feel helpless because we do not have the necessary ability or time to cope with a threatening situation. So these are the kinds of stress we might experience today. Question three, physical and emotional changes during stress. Is it always harmful? Let's see. Here. Stress can increase our energy level, make us feel challenged, cause the physical and emotional changes required to deal with the situation. But it could also cause headache, migraine, backache, insomnia, restlessness, cold hands and excess perspiration or heart disease and stroke. Psychological symptoms include tension, anxiety, anger, depression, pessimism, inability to concentrate or perform. And heart disease. Is it always bad? No, right? Some experts agree that some stress is necessary for human survival. Four, name two ways you can cope with stress. Well, you have a lot of options. Uh, listen to music, watch TV, movies, journal, play sports, exercise, get more rest, have a massage, go on a vacation, enjoy nature, organize time and environment, get information, ask for help, talk things over with people, look on the bright side of life, have a sense of humor, deep breathing, prayer, meditation, yoga. Lots of different ways to cope with stress. OK, part B. So uh, this is about different forms of the same word. For example, to mix he or Huan Yao to to combine in different ways together. The adjective is mixed. The noun is mixture. Or the second example, beauty may. The adjective is beautiful. The verb is to beautify mei hua. So for these words here, can you look up the related forms and complete this table? If you know the answer, it, you can just fill in the blank. If you don't know the answer, you can look in a dictionary or look online. Uh, I'll give you 10 minutes. I'll give you 12 minutes.
Actually, no, sorry. Uh, let, let's do this together. Uh, OK, so the first one, the adjective is anxious. The noun is anxiety. So the verb is to have anxiety. Or to be anxious. Number two, stress. The adjective is stressful or to feel stressed uh, stressed the verb is uh, to feel stressed or to stress sometimes to stress out Number three, threat. The adjective is threatening. And the verb is to threaten. Number four, reaction. The adjective is reactive. or reactionary reactionary is more political fan dong pai um but reactive or reactionary and the verb is to react we say that a reaction is a response, right? Has these on fine hoying. You can see this in the in the word, right? The root is act or action. Xing dong xing wei dong zuo. Re means again. So to react is not the first action, it's the second action in response. Someone acts toward you, you react toward them. Number five, response. The adjective is responsive. If someone is responsive, that means they are able to respond. Usually we actually see this word in the negative, unresponsive. If someone is unresponsive, that means that they are not able to respond. Like maybe they they have fainted, ring dollar. Something like that. And the verb is to respond. Number six, the verb is to exceed, which means to go over. The noun is excess. The verb is uh, sorry, so excess is the part that it has gone over. And the verb is excessive. Or also excess. Excessive is more common. Number seven, the verb is develop. Fazan. The noun is development. There are two adjectives. You can say developing or developed. Developing is it is still ongoing. Fazanzong. Developed is it has finished. Yi fazan. Number eight. The verb is to lose. The noun is loss. Loss is the thing that you have lost. And the adjective is lost.
sorry, loss is the thing that you lose, I should say. Number nine, motivate. Um, the noun is more common, motivation, dong li. Or sometimes you will see the noun motive, dong ji. And the adjective is motivated. And number 10, the verb is anticipate. The noun is anticipation. The adjective is, you can say anticipated, which is something that you anticipate anticipate is anticipated. You can also say anticipatory, which is the pure adjective of anticipate. OK, do you have questions about this table? Let's go to page 49, the next page. Here we have another table. This one is about emotions. Um, basically, it gives you one emotion and it asks you for the opposite emotion. For example, the first one, the it gives you the positive one, happy. And so the negative one should be unhappy. Number two, it gives you the negative emotion bored. Uh, there are many opposites to bored, but I think the, the best positive one is engaged. To be bored means you don't want to do this, you don't want to be here. To be engaged means you do want to do this, you do want to take part. Number three, confident. You believe in your in something. You believe in yourself, maybe. The opposite of confident is diffident. Sometimes you will also see unconfident. Number four, disappointed. The opposite of disappointed is satisfied. Actually, no, the best uh, opposite of disappointed is gratified, which means that your expectations have been met. Gratified. Number five, anxious or worried. The positive could be calm and unworried. Number six, pessimistic. This is the adjective of pessimism. The opposite, therefore, would be optimistic. Number seven, calm, pingjing. The opposite could be Restless. There are a few other possible words, right? Upset. Troubled. Disturbed. Number eight, 
Number eight, enthusiastic. The opposite is unenthusiastic. To be enthusiastic means uh, you are passionate about something, you really care about something. So unenthusiastic. And finally, number nine, scared. What is the opposite of scared? Not scared? Oh, okay, unafraid. The word afraid also just means scared. So the opposite is unafraid. OK, do you have questions about these words? OK, now you guys can do the next exercise. Uh, Part A. Oh, part D, grammar review, question A. Study the following examples. Are they right or wrong? If they are wrong, please give me the right version. Question one, I always feel so boring in my computer class. Question two, I think politics are interesting. Number three, she felt embarrassed because of her dirty clothes. Number four, Mr. Chen's speech was so interested. Number five, it's embarrassed to wear my swimsuit in public. Swimsuit, Yongzhuang. Number six, Jim gets bored very easily. Oh, also, I should say in public. Means in front of people, in front of other people in public. OK, these six. Um, it shouldn't be too hard. Five minutes. If the grammar is wrong, please tell me what it should be.
the key to this exercise is to remember that for example, for example, let's look at the first one. Boring adjectives ending in ing are progressive, and so they refer to the object. If the adjective ends in ed, for example, bored, it comes from the passive, and so it refers to the subject. ED JOA So it had So in the first sentence, I always feel boring in computer class. It should refer to the subject. I have this feeling. So it should be bored, ED. Number two, I think politics are interesting. ING, so it refers to the object. The object is politics. So this is correct. Although usually today uh, we would say politics is interesting. Even though it ends with an S, we think that politics is one area. It's one field. As an so it should be is interesting would be better. Number three, she felt embarrassed because of her dirty clothes. Ed, so it refers to the subject, she. So this is correct. Number four, Mr. Chen's speech was so interested. ED refers to the subject. The speech itself does not have that feeling, so this is wrong. It's the person listening to the speech who has this feeling. So it should be interesting. Number five, it's embarrassed to wear my swimsuit in public. The subject here is actually to wear my swimsuit in public. This action is the subject. To wear my swimsuit in public is embarrassed. The action itself does not have that feeling. It should be the person has this feeling. So it shouldn't be ED. It, it shouldn't refer to the subject. It should be ING, embarrassing. Number six, Jim gets bored very easily. ED refers to the subject, Jim. Yes, Jim does feel bored. So this is correct. OK, do you have questions? This is very important. If you often mix up ED and ING adjectives, you should remember ING comes from the progressive, so it refers to, sorry, let's, let's start with the other one. ED comes from the passive, so it refers to the subject. ING comes from the progressive, so it refers to the other noun, not the subject. Now, ING has its own jinxing slider, so it had to the sea, being why the means the gun so. Just you okay, just a Johnny Bijapo Hui Gaohun. Okay, let's go to the next page. Here we have what's called a Likert scale, like Kuliang Biao. Basically, you have a, a number of agreement options. And then you have some uh, statements below or situations. So in these situations, how stressful do you feel? From zero, no stress, to 10, very stressful. Um, let's look at these situations. 
one death of a close family member to death of a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a close friend. Three, change in health of a family member. Usually this means a, a worsening health. Their health is getting worse. Four, personal injury or illness. Injury means the, your body is hurt by, for example, you have an accident. Number five, losing your job. Number six, going on a job interview. Number seven, minor violations of the law. So it's a, not a very important law that you break. For example, a speeding ticket. Fadan. Sorry. Minor means small. Violation means breaking. So it's a small breaking of the law. Number eight, taking final exams. Number nine, moving to a new dormitory or place. Number ten, driving through heavy traffic when well, there are a lot of cars on the street. Number 11, change of personal habits. I think this is talking about like stop smoking, stop drinking, that kind of thing. Number 12, failing an English test. Number 13, being a class leader. Number 14, a oh, class leader, Bantang. Number 14, breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Number 15, first date with the opposite sex or like with somebody you like. So take a few moments to fill out this table. Uh, and then you can talk about your results with a partner. I'll give you. 10 minutes. Uh, when you talk about it with your partner, you can think about. Is your answer normal, do you think? And how would you deal with this kind of stress?
OK, let's continue. On page 51, we have here a tip for writing. Cause and effect. Inku. Seems pretty simple, right? But in real life, it is often hard to determine which is the cause and which is the effect. For example, in this sentence. Many Asian countries have economic problems due to poor education. In this sentence, it's saying that poor education is the cause. And economic problems is the effect. But if you think about it, it could be the other way around. Economic problems could cause poor education. How do we know which is the cause and which is the effect? Sometimes you have to do research. You have to look up other reasons, look up general patterns throughout history. It is very easy to add a cause effect relationship when you are not sure which is the cause and which is the effect. So in your writing, try to avoid this kind of thing. If you're not sure which is the cause and which is the effect, don't say that one of them is the cause and the other is the effect. You can say that both of these appear together, that they are correlated, your guanlian but you don't have to say that one causes another. Um, so below we have some writing exercises. If you want to do these exercises, uh, you can write a 250 to 300 word essay and hand it in on paper and I will mark it for you. 啊,如果你想練習寫作的話,你可以寫個250到300字的作文,交紙本過來,然後我幫你改完下週還你。So, uh, let's look at the possible choices if you want to do this. Number 1, describing one stressful situation or event in your life and how you dealt with it. Let's skip number two. Number three, an event or situation when you got very angry. How did you release your anger? List different ways or outlets to deal with anger. Number four, your worst moods and how you dealt with it. Use the five questions, what, who, what, when, where, why, to help you organize your ideas. Or number five, how you would like to change yourself. So if you want to do that, you can hand that in next week. OK, next, let's introduce some speaking. Here we have some phrases you can use to share your opinions, to agree or disagree, and to offer advice. So, for example, in my opinion, or I think that, or I guess, are all ways to introduce something that is your personal opinion. Agreeing or disagreeing, you can say, I totally agree with you, or I agree with you. Yes, you're right. Absolutely, which means yes. If you disagree, you can say something like, I don't think so, or I don't see it that way. You can also say something like, I'm not sure, or I'm not that sure, I'm not so sure. You can also use the very straightforward 
I disagree. But remember to give your reasons. Sometimes you agree with some of it and disagree with others uh, parts. So you can say, in a way, you're right. Still, I think that. So the word here, still here, means however. It's a kind of transition. You can also say something like, I think you're partly right. Or, I agree up to a point. These also mean that you agree with some and disagree with some. If you want to give advice, you can say, if I were you, I would. Or it doesn't have to be you, right? If I were that person, if I were in that situation, I would do something. Or if I had been, I would have. Or one thing I might do. Or one thing I might have done. OK, so grab a partner and uh, choose one of these situations. Uh, let's look at these situations. A is a heavy smoker, smokes a lot. And B advises them to quit smoking. Number two, A only studies the night before an exam. B gives them tips on study habits. Three, A thinks that cheating during a test is okay, or cheating on a test is okay, as long as no one knows about it. B disagrees and gives their opinion on cheating. Number four, A thinks that working part-time is more important than studying, but B does not think so. Uh, here the word so just means this, does not think this. Number five, A is under a lot of stress because they recently broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend. B gives them some advice. And number six, A is a reckless motorcyclist and often drives fast. She went Belta. B advises them to change this habit, to stop doing this. So grab a partner, choose uh, who is A, who is B. And I want to add one more thing. B does not want advice. So the, the person who is B does not want advice. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes to talk about it and we will have a late break. We'll take a break at 10.06.
Let's continue. Next, we also have a listening, sorry, speaking exercise. Here we have five situations. Choose one situation and talk about it with your partner. Number one, you have a good friend whom you've been close to. Last week, he was fired from his part time job and he asked to borrow $5,000. You lent it to him and already he has asked for another loan. You have the money, but you have discovered your friend is gambling, Du Bo, and may be betting all the money. In short, you don't want to lend the money anymore. Number two, for the past six months, you've been dating someone living in Taizong whom you think is special. You've just learned that he or she has secretly started dating other people. You feel heartbroken, yet you just can't let go. Number three, your best friend has told you that he or she is very interested in someone romantically. The problem is that this third person just asked you out on a date. You would like to go on the date, but you don't want to hurt your best friend. Number four, yesterday you were with three friends in the cafeteria, Tanting, and they were criticizing another person you know, the Piping Dissigaran. Their information was incorrect. You didn't want to isolate yourself from your friends, but you didn't like their comments either. Number five, you have a grandparent who criticize you all the time about your behavior, your clothes, your friends, and even your plans for the future. You want to be respectful, but you really can't stand this criticism anymore. So, uh, choose one of these situations. One of you has this problem, and you can talk about what to do. I'll give you 10 minutes.
OK, let's continue. One more speaking practice. Let's play a game. Uh, everyone have a coin? Flip a coin, If it's heads, move two steps and answer the question. If it's tails, move one step and answer the question. And we have actually a few more questions. 15 questions. OK, so with your partner, get a coin, start flipping. Let's take a look at these questions first. Number one, describe a time when you were very happy. Number two, what do you do when you get angry? Number three, ask your classmate a question. Number four, what would you do if your boyfriend or girlfriend forgot your date? Number five, answer your classmate's question. So somebody else asks you a question. Number six, what has been your latest achievement? Number seven, what can make you very unhappy? Number eight, ask your classmate a question. Number nine, describe a time when you were very embarrassed. Number 10, tell us a joke or a funny experience that you had. Number 11, tell us an event or a situation that was quite stressful for you. Number 12, how would you feel if your girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with you? 13, what is something you are proud of? 14, what is a bad habit you want to get rid of? Xiao Number 15, ask a question. OK, grab a partner. I'll give you 10 minutes.
OK. Let's go to the next page and let's do some listening. Here we have two women talking and uh, try to answer the following questions. One, what were the men doing while Nora and Sarah were talking? Two, what is causing stress in Sarah's life? Three, what had happened between Sarah and Phil? Four, what advice did Nora give to Sarah to manage her stress? Five, what should Sarah do to be less lonely and scared? Lonely, Gudu. Six, in which city did this dialogue take place? Seven, what can Sarah and Phil do together? Let's take a listen. OK, so question one, what were the men doing while Nora and Sarah were talking? They were in the studio making a commercial. Number two, what is causing stress in Sarah's life? Phil, her partner. Number three, what had happened between Sarah and Phil? 
Sarah says it feels like they are growing apart. They don't have much to talk about. Number four, what advice did Nora give to Sarah to manage her stress? She says that this is normal for young couples because work is more complicated than school. 开始上班后生活变复杂, Number five, what should Sarah do to be less lonely and scared? Talk with Phil more and find some common interests. Number six, in which city did this dialogue take place? Nora said, as a young woman in Taipei. So it's in Taipei. Number seven, what can Sarah and Phil do together? Sarah says that Phil used to like table tennis, and bowling, and she says, maybe I can start bowling again. So the answer is bowling. Okay, questions? Well, we have finished unit four. Uh, so that's already one half of the final exam. Next week, let's start on unit five. So let's take a break now and I will meet you in the next classroom.